After six years of work, the world's biggest island has finally unveiled a draft for its constitution. Greenland occupies a vital strategic location in the North Atlantic and gained autonomy from Denmark in 1979. But the former colonial power still has control of the island's most important affairs. As special correspondent Malcolm Brabant reports, Greenlanders are now seeking greater influence in the world and a future free of Denmark. In Greenland's coastal settlements, the clamour to break free is intensifying. 200 years after Greenland was dragooned into the Kingdom of Denmark, its draft constitution reflects the frustrations of the predominantly Inuit people on top of the world. We are trying to break from the colonial chains. Aki Matilda Hurdam is one of two lawmakers representing Greenland in the Danish parliament. In the end, it has nothing to do with you in Denmark that we are acting this way. It has everything to do with us wanting to move forward in our lives. In May, her dam caused outrage by refusing to speak Danish during a parliamentary debate, just feet from Prime Minister Mette Frederiksen. Let me once again encourage you to read your speech in Danish. Why did you do it? I did it to demonstrate the inequality of the systems that we have. So people keep telling me that there is a community, that it's a realm that where people are intertwined and interconnected, and we have the same language, the same culture, and everyone knows that's not true. What sort of backlash have you had from that? I've received a lot of backlash for it. So people are not used to, especially people from Denmark are not used to anyone speaking other than Danish in the Danish parliament. Um, so a lot of hate mails, a lot of um, harassment in general. With 80% of Greenland covered in ice, it's a barometer for climate change. But as glaciers retreat because of global warming, the temperature between Greenland and Denmark's capital Copenhagen is chilling. Prime Minister Mute Egede. As we all live under the same sun, we live all under different conditions, but have all the same goal, we aim for a future for our children and future generations. Danish Queen Margrethe's realm includes Greenland, which relies on an annual handout from Denmark of more than $500 million. But in the draft constitution, Greenland envisages complete independence, and there's no mention of keeping the Danish monarch as head of state. Everyone is welcome to our beautiful country. If you respect and listen to us. When the focus is on Greenland and the Arctic, it must be on our terms. You are welcome to have an opinion, but decision concerning Greenland and Arctic must be made by us, the indigenous people and people who have Arctic as their home. There are just over 57,000 Greenlanders, making their nation the most sparsely populated in the world. Greenland has limited self-rule and there's widespread resentment at being regarded as second-class citizens by the Danes. For many Greenlanders, divorce can't come quickly enough. I think this is uh, inevitable. Veteran diplomat Michael Zilmer-Jons used to be Denmark's ambassador to NATO. I just hope that we can find a model where it would not be like, you know, a hard Brexit, where we could create a new community, a new commonwealth together. Under the current arrangement, Denmark is responsible for Greenland's defence, foreign affairs and monetary policy, and it's reluctant to seat control. Are you concerned that if Greenland does break away, that it may become vulnerable to so-called predator states like China and also Russia? Yes, and this is why I think it's very important for Greenland, but also for us and for the United States, that we find a model where Greenland will not be just a battlefield for competing big powers, but has us as a guarantor and uh, remain member of NATO and so on. The United States has had a strong military presence since 1943, when the Tula Air Base was built in northwest Greenland. For decades, anti-Americanism festered in Greenland, not least because indigenous people were forced out of their homes to accommodate Tula. But attitudes have changed following Russia's invasion of Ukraine. I think the, the most important effect of the Ukraine war in the first place has been for all of the Greenlandic political spectrum to, to kind of assure that we're 
uh, part of the West. Ulrich Pramgad is a Greenland expert at the Danish Institute for International Studies. The U.S. can rest assured that whatever happens, independence or not, Greenland wants to be a part of NATO. So in that sense, there's been a shift of, of positions in Greenlandic politics. Russia's volatility means that Greenland's strategic role in U.S. defense is perhaps more important now than during the Cold War. Catastrophic Russian armored losses in Ukraine resulted in a solitary Second World War tank garnishing the annual victory parade in Moscow. But Russia's nuclear arsenal remains as strong as ever and in the hands of a leader who's more unpredictable than his Soviet predecessors. The potential threat from rogue states is why the US has been upgrading missile defense systems at Tula in recent years. In April, Tula was renamed the Pitofix Space Base in recognition of Greenland's contribution to American and Western security. Any missile coming in across, you know, Eurasian vectors will be passing over the Arctic region. And so having a network of sensors as far north as possible is vitally important. Dr. Rebecca Pincus is director of the Polar Institute in Washington and an expert on Arctic geopolitics and security. With the advent of new generations of intercontinental both missiles and platforms, including hypersonics, those far northern locations for early warning um, are, are even more important. Pincus believes that Greenland is now entering a new era in which it can leverage its increased strategic importance to extract more financial support from Western nations, anxious to prevent China or Russia from exploiting Greenland's mineral wealth. Too many of the decisions in the past were not um, adequately made on, with the involvement of Greenlanders. They did not have enough um, agency. That is changing and we will never go back to the way things were. In 2019, President Trump's offer to buy Greenland was ridiculed, but Ulrich Pramgad has a suggestion. The US could perhaps buy Greenland in the sense that if a lot of American investments arose, then naturally Greenland would orient itself closer to the US. If Greenland does secure full independence, some experts believe that Denmark's importance in the world will diminish. Instead of saying Greenland needs Denmark and saying well, Denmark actually kind of needs Greenland as well. Um, we can say, then let's just create an equal society if we look at the systematics of it, that how the democracy is, instead of just pointing fingers at each other. Politicians like Her Dam would like to see independence secured by 2030. But that target could fall victim to long and difficult divorce negotiations. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Malcolm Brabant.